That's a good question, isn't it? I can only give you piecemeal answers. I can only say what the value is in, in one dairy farm. I can tell you what the value is in 60 vineyards in the Wifra Valley. Um, we have to just do some, some resource economics, which I'm sure you know about, and some ecological science, and find ways of valuing it. The big problem with biodiversity worldwide is we're losing it, but people don't understand its value and don't know how to, how to calculate its value. So I work with resource economists at Lincoln, and we have some good methods, which aren't novel, but biologists don't usually use them. You have to do it piece by piece. What's the value of the white flower in the vineyard? $250 per hectare per year plus ecotourism. What's the value of those, those plants on the dairy farm? If that was a sheep farm, we know very well that the survival of newborn lambs goes up between 10 and 15% if they have the right type of shelter with the right type of porosity. So you can value what's a newborn lamb worth. So putting dollars on biodiversity is a way to go, but I can only do it piecemeal at the moment for this country. All right, yeah, it seems a bit obvious, actually, to have to worry about putting a whole lot of uh, um, numbers to it, but uh, that's all right. Um, we, we have quite a few questions, actually, here this time. People are getting the hang of this asking questions by sticky note business. Um, the, the, happy, the, the nappies question, um, if you, jog down here for a second, I'll, I'll wrap it up, but people want to know what um, happens to the composted stuff, can, can Steve put it on, on uh, the vineyard, and um, what about disease uh, moving through that system, um, that sort of thing. Okay, so, so, those two particular. Mm. so what happens to the, the compost? The compost, yeah, where can okay. it go, and is, it, is there any risk of disease through that? Right, okay, obviously with the, with the compost, the, the whole of the nappy incontinence product or sanitary waste is all pre-shredded and is mixed with green waste and goes through the whole composting process. At the end of it, we screen it, we remove all the isolated plastic that is sent away for recycling. We have our oversized portions which are reused as a um, bulking agent to go back into the composting unit. And the final product, we've actually only just got enough product now after a year to have enough product to be able to do some trials. So we've currently got some trials underway um, in viticulture, horticulture. Um, we've got some in seedling raising. We've got some in ready lawns. So we've got a few different trials that are currently underway at the moment. As far as um, pathogens, we, we exceed um, New Zealand standards for our pathogen levels. Um, we exceed UK standards for plastic residue in the, in the product. Um, there is the process that we go through does kill all um, chemicals that are, are currently, I guess a lot of people look at um, elderly especially and their medications. Obviously medication is designed to be used in the body so it's only a small percentage that's discreted, excreted anyway. And then of that, I mean, our product is in our units for sort of up to two weeks at 50 to 60 degrees for that period of time. So all residue is removed during that process. Okay. Considering about 87% of people in New Zealand live in cities, does your education program focus at all on connecting people to nature close to where they live and work? as opposed to focusing solely on rural and non-human dominated environments? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, we've tried to draw our outdoor experiences into the environments that are relevant to the students' everyday lives um, uh, a lot more than we have done in the past. It's a trend that's happening in outdoor education all over the world. For example, there's an Outward Bound now that's uh, located in, within New York City. Um, we work with um, local in, uh, Maori language schools. We um, work with youth at risk. Um, uh, yeah, we, we try and engage the students in their local communities and, and making changes within those communities in their daily lives. All right. And um, did you have a question for Andrew from, from Wellington as well? Uh, we do indeed. And. Um, What's the legal structure of uh Oh, have we lost it, Jess? Oh, we lost it. The legal structure. 
Did you get that question? Uh, I, got, I got as far as legal structure. Was that the end of the question? Sorry. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, uh, just an addition there. Is it a cooperative? Oh, your legal structure. Oh, the, the legal structure of main power. No, it's, it's, uh, it's very complicated. Um, it's, a, it's a trust, um, a community trust, or well, the shares of main power are held by a trust on behalf of the community, if that makes sense. All right, and have you had any trouble from, from the big guys? Trouble from the big guys? Uh, no, I think they, they're kind of um, watching with interest, perhaps. Uh, they, we're, we're operating, as far as our generation aspirations go, we're operating in a space which is kind of below their level of interest. There's, there, um, there's a lot of effort into um, putting a small project together, and, and they're quite happy to put that effort into putting big projects together. Um, Retail-wise, they're, they're getting quite competitive themselves. If you look at Meridian's um, power shop, the internet-based retailer, and uh, Mighty River Power have launched Tiny Mighty in our neighbourhood, which are... Uh, is there a Tiny Mighty man there? Okay. Tiny as Mighty. A, <laughs> as a, as a, um, you know, a low-cost retailer, and that's one of the reasons why I said we may or may not get into that ourselves. All right. Thanks. And from Dunedin, there was a question for Arthur. Over here. Closer. Tim. Question. Uh -huh. Dunedin? Uh oh. Turn your sound on. There you go. Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. There's a comment from a user in Dunedin um, that uh, yes, if we use less, we could, we could get by better. Um, and that one person here that uh, turns off the hot water cylinder from Monday through Friday and goes to the swimming pool. Um, and uses theirs. <laughs> but uh, a, a real question that we had for you. There's a, there's a question. Uh, is, do you believe, Arthur, that New Zealand can be a globally competitive manufacturer of solar hot water heaters? And uh, what might it take for this to happen? Whew. Um, probably not, um, because it would take a large amount of capital to uh, put into a, a manufacturing operation uh, and the, the people who can do that are usually the ones who have A, access to large amounts of capital and B, large local markets. So I, I, I would suggest that uh, um, we probably won't become uh, ever uh, global, global manufacturers. We may find niches, we may find specific countries and we may export our technology and have it manufactured elsewhere uh, in, a, in other countries for their use. All right, and we did have one local from you. Somebody was a bit alarmed by the cadmium idea in, in solar panels. What's the lifetime of those and, and uh, what do you do with them after that lifetime? Solar uh, PV panels. You, you said about recycling any of the materials that you've used in, in uh, solar panels. Uh, in as, as you would recycle anything you use in other devices, such as lithium batteries, which we're all using in our cameras. And, and, uh, and do you, do you know of anybody actually doing that? Is there? Well, nobody's there? recycling yet because there are only a few, uh, a few of the, uh, the newer types of, of PV panels. There are several new types. The, the majority is still, uh, still silicon based, but there's cadmium telluride, there's the uh, Copper, indium, gallium, selenite, indium or CIGSs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and these are all uh, thin film things, which which uh, can become a lot cheaper to manufacture than than, uh, than some of the silicon. Right, panels. a bit more of a challenge to recycle as well. And and again, there will be recycling challenges. Yes. Mm. All right, and uh, if we go to Auckland, um, you have a, some questions for us, it looks like for Steve and maybe some others. Auckland, question? Uh, we do have a question that's for Andrew. Andrew, all right, Andrew. Yes. Is, he, is it still Yep, there? he's coming. Go ahead and ask. Okay. Uh, the question is, Andrew, how do you see the promotion of energy efficiency by consumers fitting with your focus on renewable energy generation? Uh, it's a it's a great thing. It's not a it's not a problem to a uh, network company because we don't mind having load taken off the network. All right. So, uh, ch champions of efficiency at the moment, or uh, we do a bit of that. Yeah, a bit. All right. <laughs>